All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And um, we got a video for today, guys. We got a video. I'm sure everyone knows what we're going to be talking about in today's video. As I'm sure you saw in the thumbnail and you can see in the background, we have to talk about the new Bands Restrictions update list. Okay, that's what we have to go over today. Y'all know we have to do it. Um, real quick though, let me say this up front. I like to give a quick layout of how each video is going to go. This will not be like a normal video. I'm going to be hyper-focused on the breaking news of these bans and restrictions updates. We're going to be talking about that, focusing in on that mainly, and we're not going to be doing anything else. We're not doing the VB Lab. We're not doing an art critique. We're not doing a sim game or anything like that. We're just focusing in on the news we got last night and talking about that. Now, I will still try, I will still try to have like timestamps in the general description so you can skip around wherever you want to on whatever topic we're talking about. But this is going to be a pretty freestyle video, guys, where I'm kind of going to be, I'll probably be all over the place. It won't be too directional, um, but, but I will be talking about as much as I can, you know, think about in regards to this. Talking about how will this affect the meta? What do I think about the bans? What do I wish had gotten banned or had not gotten banned or gotten restricted or, or whatever, right? So, all right, you know what you get into, guys? Let's dive straight into this. Okay, so last night, uh, this morning, I guess, technically, it depends on where you are in the world, right? Banned and restricted cards update announcement starting September 1st. Today is August 12th. Starting September 1st, 2024, the following cards will be added to the list of banned cards that cannot be included in a deck. It is ST10001 Red Purple Trafalgar Law, the leader, as you can see on the left, and the two-cost stage Annie's Lobby, OP03098, the stage card, as you can see on the right. So... One thing I do want to mention real quick is I do hope there's some type of clarification because when I was listening this morning, like, yes, I did listen to this this morning at like, I think it was like 6 a.m. Eastern when they finally announced this after the tournament they held, you know, randomly. I think, what was it like a Sunday or a Monday for them that they randomly held this tournament? Anyway, I stayed up till 6 a.m. to to hear this, right? And um, I don't know what they said. I don't speak any Japanese. I don't even know like a little, I don't even, I don't even know like beginner's Japanese to try and piece things together in my mind. Um, but here's the thing. I don't know if they mentioned it in the actual speech they gave when they when they showed this slide, but it doesn't say on here, it does not clarify, is this going to be for both the West and the East? And for those who might be thinking that's a stupid question, guys, I guess you weren't here in OP04 if you think that's a stupid question, because they did a separate bans and restriction list for the West and the East back then, where there were cards banned for us in the West or restricted, and that were not banned or restricted in the East at the, same, at the exact same time period. So... I hope there is some clarification on that. I, I mean, let me just say this, guys. I think this is going, going to apply to both the West and the East. If I had to guess, this is to both regions. However, I do. I would really like for them to clarify that very soon, and hopefully they will very soon on their website, on the official website. And it was not updated on that information last time I checked. So, here we go. Real quick, so let's go ahead and talk about Red Purple Law first. Um, there is something to be said about Red Purple Law. Okay, I think everyone saw the writing on the wall. Um, this is this is the results. Let me move my face for a second. Okay, this is the wave one results of tournaments from the east. Okay, let me let me put this into perspective. I don't speak Japanese either. Well, what's going on? Okay, this is just using Google Translate. So notice this. On the left is the name of the tournament, and on the right is the deck that won. So now, now that you you know that, check this out, guys. So this is wherever the tournament was held. I don't know. But then on the right was Red Purple Law, Red Purple Law, Red Purple Law, Luchi. Notice down here it's uh, Luchi, Black Luchi. And then Luchi again. And then Red Purple Law, Red Purple Law, Red Purple Law. And spoiler warning, guys. I'll give a, I will give a small spoiler warning. The tournament that was held, let me say this. Let me, let me say it like this. This was announced, like these, uh, these bans and restrictions were announced at the end of a tournament that happened last night slash this morning. Okay, and in that, at the end of that tournament, I'm going to give you one spoiler warning here, guys. It was between Red Purple Law and Luchi. So guess what? This little, this little graph we're seeing or this little information chart we're seeing, add another one to the list. You see what I'm saying? So Red Purple Law was absolutely dominating the format in OP08 in the East and in, in even going into OP08.5. So I will say this. While I understand a lot of people might not want Red Purple Law to get banned, I don't like banning leaders either, by the way, guys. And, and another spoiler, we're about to talk about what replaced Red Purple Law. There's a new promo card, just like they did to Sakazuki. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Hold your horses. Hang on. But guys, I am not for banning leaders. I, I'm just not a big fan of it. 
I would rather them errata leaders and then reprint them later, and then you have to use the new eroded card. That's just the way that I would prefer it happen, and I understand if you don't like that. I'm just saying that's how I would prefer it happen. But I do understand why they banned this leader. It was absolutely dominant, okay? Lucci was keeping up with it, and because of that, they even hit Lucci a little bit as well with Innie's Lobby. We're going to talk about Innie's Lobby in just a minute. I think Lucci's going to be just fine. Let, let me say that right now, guys. I understand losing Innie's Lobby was a big deal, but I think Lucci's going to be fine. Red Purple Law fans, on the other hand, probably not. Let's just be honest, and we'll talk more about that later as we get into the new promo leader <laughs> that they released to replace him. Same thing happened to Blue Black Sakazuki. It is what it is. Now, Red Purple Law, like I said, was absolutely dominating in OP08. So I do get why they did the ban, and I'm not saying that I'm for it or against it. I don't like when they ban leaders. I wish there was a better way to do this, but I do at least understand where they were coming from. Now, going over to the black card pool, because now we're going to talk about Innie's Lobby. I'm going to talk about a card first that I think, I don't I don't know how it escaped. I don't know how it evaded the ban, um, or, or at least some type of restriction. I'm just going to say it, guys. I was a little bit surprised. I'm not saying, you know... I'm not complaining. I'm not whining. I'm just saying, I was a little bit surprised Gecko Moria was not on this list. I'm just going to be honest, guys. I'm just being completely honest. And I know everyone, there's a lot of people who, they, they think they're thinking like so far ahead. They're like, well, that would destroy this deck, this deck, and this deck. I get it. Hey, Red Purple Law got destroyed, okay? A deck might get destroyed. Hey, Any's Lobby might hurt Lucci. Maybe Gecko will take over as the premier black deck. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying you never know what's going to happen. But with Gecko Moria... I don't know. Let me, let me say it like this. I think that is a bigger issue in the game right now from the black card pool more so than like something like Innie's Lobby. I'm going to show at the, towards the end of the video, I will show off a deck list for Lucci that I was running. I was only running three stages. So now I'm just going to toss the three, the three stages for three Ice Ages. I'll have to do a few uh, modifications as well. But all I'm trying to say is I think Lucci's still going to be solid. Um, I could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe the stage just meant that much. But people, I feel like people said the same thing about Great Eruption. Um, I remember what people said about Tempest Kick. The, uh, the, the, uh, the CP uh, one cost, minus three, draw card. People said that card wouldn't work. And I was like, no, I think it's going to work just fine. And it did. And it works, it works brilliantly. Uh, in his lobby, though, I just don't see this as being like the major issue they should have focused on. That's just me. Um, yes, it is still technically a nerf because getting a turn one in his lobby really, really benefited Lucci's chances of winning a game. I'm sure. I'm sure it really did help. Um, so I get this ban. I'm not. I'm not totally against the ban. But this is the same way I felt about um, Great Eruption. It's like I just don't see where. <clears throat> excuse me. I still think that Lucci will be a totally dominant deck. I guess I guess that's what I'm trying to say, and we'll see. Maybe not. You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. I'm just asking that you please keep it respectful, okay? Please chill, guys. I know a lot of emotions are flaring up about this, but I personally think they should have restricted... Well, okay, l let me let me take a step back. I think that Gecko Moria should have been a leader-locked card to begin with. I think Gecko Moria should have been leader-locked to Thriller Bark, or maybe even Thriller Bark slash Seven Whirlers of the Sea or something like that. That would have been fine with me. And then there wouldn't have been any kind of Gecko Moria stuff going on, and people would have had to build their decks accordingly. Like, Black Yellow Luffy would have had to build their deck accordingly without Gecko Moria. And by the way, for those who are, who are, who are not aware or who were not playing the game, the game, there was a point in time where Black Yellow Luffy was still doing well in tournaments without Gecko Moria. They just had to build the deck differently. And there's not a ton of results, I, I will admit to that, and they were smaller tournaments. But the point is, people will adapt. Right, people, people adapt. That's all I'm going to say. And when it comes to Innie's Lobby, I'm having these, like, um, how do you say it, like, flashbacks of Sakazuki. It's like, people thought, like, okay, Sakazuki's just dead now because, number one, they banned the leader and they banned Great Eruption. And it's like, okay, but, but that was just a black deck. So you took all the cards out of that that you could and then put them over into Luchi, and now you have a five-life leader. <laughs> And, and you you know, yes, you do you do lose the blue card pool. I understand those were very powerful cards being able to bottom deck. I, I totally get it. Hound Blaze is insane. But it's like, now you have Lucci that just took the place of, like, the, the, the primary black deck in the format. Because that's what Sakazuki was. I understand it was a blue-black deck. But let's just be honest, guys. I think, like, what, 95% of the cards in it were black. Or I don't know the, the exact percentage, but I think it was, like, 85% was black. Then, okay, then it just became 
uh, Lucci. And for a while, it was even like Gecko Moria, right? Or like Gecko Moria was right there with it. There's just a certain there's a certain card pool that exists in the black cards right now. It just goes to wherever you want, right? It just it's like okay, so so you so you ban Sakazuki. All right, we'll just move over to um. You can kind of choose like do I do I want to go more the Gecko Moria route or do I want to go the more Lucci route? And you go there. Now removing the stage, like I said, I just I don't see where this fixes the problem of how black can remove a card every single turn. Because that was that's really what, what, what that's really what puts like uh, some decks that are black like over the top is where it's like okay remove a card every single turn, and and here's the thing if if people if people are thinking like yeah but now it'll be harder to remove the bigger characters, I don't think so. You just again you either change out Innie's lobby for things like Ice Age or you change out Innie's lobby uh, Innie's lobby for things like um, uh, Stussy. Or the five cost, uh, excuse me, not the five cost, the eight cost Sabo, things like that. I just don't think it'll be that big of a big of a deal. That's that's just me. Uh, I know for a while I think they were even running Sakazuki when they were still trying to figure out the perfect Luchi list. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't see the Innie's lobby as like even being relevant. Now who knows? Like I said, please don't jump on me about that. I'm, I know the card is good. I know the card is absolutely solid. It was working perfectly in Luchi, and it really helped them in the early game. I'm just saying that I think Lucci's still going to be just fine. We'll have to see. Now, with that in mind, let's, let's uh, keep going. I do have a few more slides here. Red Purple Law. We got to go back to Red Purple Law. Got replaced with a new promo leader, guys. Check this out. Okay, let me uh, um, make the, the face cam smaller. ST10, due to the ban of Trafalgar Law. Wait, wait, due to the ban of ST10001 Trafalgar Law, a new leader card with Trafalgar Law text will be distributed at local at social gatherings at local gatherings at social gatherings from September 1st onwards. Please wait for further information. Now, I can't even read that down here, guys. I don't know if that's a correct translation because it's just Google Translate, but this is from the Discord where they do all the translations. This is what it says. Um, excuse me, promo 088 now, not ST10, right? Trafalgar Law, Red Purple Leader, 4 Life, 5,000 Power. Oh, it's the exact same as last one. Nice. No, we'll see what the effect does. Activate Main, once per turn, Dawn minus 3. That is the same. Send one of your 3,000 Power or higher characters to the bottom of your deck. Play up to one 4 cost or lower Heart Pirates type character card from your hand. <laughs> Yikes, man. Now, I had the same reaction over Sakazuki. Why even print the card? You know, like why even print this card? It, it, like this is this is almost embarrassing levels of design. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not. I, I don't like being negative. That's one thing I really don't like. But let's just be honest, guys. Who thinks this is a good leader card? Please, actually, no one answer that. Never mind. Never. Don't don't even answer it. Um, in all seriousness, though, guys, this card is like an abomination of a leader. Like it's, it, it just, I don't know how you're going to run this. You're going to send one of your own 3000 power or higher. You can't even do like a, like a searcher. I wish it was like, I wish you could just send one of your, your um, characters to the bottom of your deck. Cause then at least you could maybe make this work where it's like, start off with a searcher, then bottom deck it to cheat out another guy. And then you could go from there with a Dawn minus three effect. Then you can still run cards like Beppo. You can still run cards like, um, what's his name? Uh, Shashi and Penguin. But instead, man, like that, that send one of your 3,000 power or higher characters to the bottom of your deck? What? You know, like, ah, oh, man. I was all for erotaing, erotaing, however you say that, this leader. I wanted them to do, um, I'm not going to go all the, way to the back, uh, all the way to the front of the slide. I wanted them to make this leader where you basically did Dawn minus three, and then you just had to pick one of the effects. Do you want to bottom deck a 3,000 power or lower character, or do you want to cheat out a four cost or higher character, or four cost or lower character from your hand? And I will say this, I think they probably should have done the locking, but lock it to Heart Pirates, Straw Hats, or, um, what's the other one? Kid Pirates. So that way they couldn't cheat out, um, actually, excuse me, they could have locked it to Heart Pirates and Straw Hat only, so that way they couldn't cheat out Kid and Killer. That way they couldn't cheat out Raju. Like, I wish they had done something like that. And y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. What do y'all think they should have done with Red Purple for the for this new promo card? The, the leader's banned. It is what it is, right? Like, that, you know, this is just a matter of time right here. Like, th this has happened. Like, this is going to happen on September 1st. I'm recording this on August 12th, guys. So, hey, get your get your last little bit of time in with Red Purple Law at your locals if this is your favorite deck, guys. Because there's probably only going to be like two, maybe three. I don't know the exact date. Two, maybe three more um, locals you're going to be able to play this leader at. 
So yeah, it is what it is. Uh, very unfortunate. I will say that uh, very, very unfortunate in that regard. But I do understand the banning of Red Purple Law to, to help the game moving forward. I, I wish they would have done some type of errata, but it is what it is. Now with black, like I said, I do want to go back to the black cards here. We're going to actually go out of this and go into something I have up right here. So this is just my, this is my OP07 Lucci list. I'm not saying it's perfect. Let me move Lucci so it all fits on one bar like this. Let me just say this right now. As long as I have this card right here, and as long as I have this card right here, and, okay, and Helmepo, and this, this card right here, I don't need this one. I, I know that sounds like, yeah, you say that now. Don't worry, guys. I will make an entire video showing you guys how you just don't need any lobby. I mean, we know that because there are certain games that Lucci doesn't draw any lobby. It just happens, right? It just happens. Um, but I think in, in this, so let me say this going forward. I think it's a very easy fix. I think you drop the three Innies Lobbies, drop down two of these Brooks right here, and then you probably go up a Hell Meppo. Hang on one second, guys. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. Let me let all the black cards um, load in for a second. It'll take a second to do it, but I'll talk while, while we're waiting. I think you just go up the um, Hell Meppos, go up a Kaku, and then you can go up a few other things like Ice Ages. Let me see if it loaded in yet. Nice. We're good. Okay, so let me first... So Ice Age... This is a card. Let me. I'll just put it at three for now. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll be adjusting it. Uh, and then also, there's also the idea of you could go back to the Hina package. There's going to be a lot of different ways you can build now. Like, you're going to be able to do a few things. Maybe we go back down the brand new path and build it more Navy-centered. I have seen Lucci lists that are Navy-centered, guys. So for people who might be thinking like, oh, that's crazy. Who would do that? Actually, quite a bit of people, right? Because then you start fitting in your uh, Borsalinos. You start fitting in your, uh, your Kuzans. Uh, this guy, the four cost. Well, I guess technically the five, the ten cost too, if you want to. But I was mainly talking about this guy for a, for a better curve. You could drop down one Lucci, maybe even drop down one Rebecca, and you could just go a more Navy centered package. Now you don't have to. I'm just saying that's an option. Another thing is this guy here, Kaku. If if we're going, um, if we're losing a lot of our uh, KO power, no problem. We're going up another Kaku. One more thing I want to mention is this ban takes place on September first. We're going to be getting OP08 in the West on like, uh, I don't know the exact date, to be honest, guys. I think it's like September 13th or something like that, sub September 18th or something. So it won't be much longer till we have OP08 in the West. Well, guess what that means? Uh, let me do uh, 08. It should bring up these. So these are all OP08 cards, at least starting right here. So it's like, we'll have access to Kaido. Maybe there'll be some potential there. We'll definitely have access to this guy. Right, like that's that's going in the list. Let me let me get rid of the e shows for now. I'm not saying we should get rid of them. I'm just adding this card so we can see it. Like we're definitely going to be able to run Jack as the, they already run that in in the East, in their Lucci list. So, like think about it like this: if you just attack with your leader, of course I got rid of the leader. Let me uh, let me get the leader back. Where is? Gosh, there we go. Whoop. Pause and read the card, guys. If you just attack with your leader. You can do minus one to whatever character you want to, and then you're popping a four or less with this guy. So, I mean, how do I say this? Like I said, I, I, I honestly think that get, that Lucci is just going to keep popping the entire board every single turn. I don't think anything's going to stop him. I think we just go up on cards like um, like the, the Kaku here. Oh, and another card's coming out. I forgot about this one. This card, Who's Who? This is a former CP9, and, and Spandam is worded in a way that he can search up former CP9. So we can literally go up the... Uh, let me just go four of these for now, and I'll, I'll adjust the 2K counter package later. Um, yeah. So right now I have 14 2K counters in. Maybe, I wouldn't want to take out the, the Subaru, right? Because Subaru actually can double over and help us where um, Any's Lobby's gone now. So I would like to keep that in the list, but at the same time, we do have this guy. Let me just go like this for now. I'll drop down to where we have 12 2K counters, where I've got two here, two here, four and four. And all I'm saying is this. This guy, who's who? This is another way to pop cards, guys. And, and it's an on play. Yes, it is a 2K counter. But hey, actually, who knows? Maybe at that point, maybe we go up to, to uh, you know, 12, 14, 16 2K counters. And then we actually use this guy as KO. And then he doubles over as, two, as a 2K counter later in the game. Because I've seen people drop who's who multiple times a game, like who's who into who's who at the at the top tables over in the east. So this is not it's not like this is some dead card. And since we have Tempest Kick and we're always filling up our trash, we have our Span Dam to fill up the trash, we have Ice Age, and like I was saying, there might even be a world where we actually run brand new. Not saying we do, not saying we have to, but it's an option. Uh, but one thing I will say, since any's lobby is no longer in the like in the package, I think that does hurt our um our brook. 
Brook was really good because if you had Indy's Lobby, it was minus two, and then your leader was minus one, so minus three altogether, and this could pop a four or less. That was massive. That was bigger than a lot of people understand because that allowed us to eat a card from, from like Red Purple uh, Law every turn. And soon, Blue Dofi. I'll talk about some decks that will probably emerge here soon, guys, as like really strong contenders. But you know, bear with me. We'll get there in a minute. But like any deck that drops down a bunch of four-cost characters, pretty much all decks run four and under characters, right? Well, if, if we're losing Any's Lobby, if we're losing this stage... Brook loses a lot of early game power. It's not that he's dead or anything. You'll still be able to use Ice Age with him. You'll still be able to use Tempest Kicks and things like this. But like as is right here, I would probably drop down uh, d down to two and then you could drop down one Rebecca and then it's perfect. Because th then you're going to have like a double... Um, it's going to be like, okay, later in the game, right? When you're late in the game, you've got 20 cards in your trash. It's like, okay, when I go to, to grab... Or when I go to play out my Gecko Moria, what do I want to do? Do I want to go Rebecca into Brook to pop like a single target and then maybe get back something like a, a searcher or something for a, like, you know, bring, you know, hang on. I said, you know, like 20 times, bear with me. Say we go minus, minus five here, minus one here. We can pop a seven or less with Brook out, out of, uh, out of Rebecca. And then we can snag a, uh, a span dam and do some stuff like that. Do some searching, you know, fix our hand, fill up our trash more, blah, blah, blah. Or do we need to go Rebecca Spandine into Lucci and pop two smaller targets or two, you know, two like mi you know, middle range targets, medium range targets, and go from there? Because we will still have that full combo where it's like grab Rebecca, grab Helmepo, Helmepo, Hel Helmepo on play first, then Rebecca grabbing back Spandine, Spandine grabbing back Lucci and popping whatever we need to from there. And at that point, like I said, I think we just go up to four of these Ice Ages. Because then one thing I do want to mention, let me put my glasses on. Check this out, guys. Okay, trigger, KO a three or less on, on Tempest Kick. Ice Age, trigger, KO a three or less. Who's who? Trigger, KO a three or less. So, like, we're going to have this way of dealing with early cards on the board very easily, and we'll still run two, two Brooks. And we have the, the Kakus here. But later in the game, that's where it becomes a bigger issue against, like, bigger targets. But now we're going to be running Ice Age instead of Stage, so it will actually be easier for Lucci to pop the bigger targets. Anyway, I understand a lot of people... Okay, let, let me say this. I am not glad Indy's Lobby is gone. I'm not saying like, oh great, that's gone, you know, it doesn't even matter to me. I'm going to be honest. Like I said, I will make a video on Lucci without the stage later. <laughs> Lucci's going to be A-OK, -okay, guys. I don't, I don't know if it'll be the best deck in the format for Black anymore. That might become Gecko Moria. Who knows? But I think Lucci is going to be doing just fine and dandy. However, with Red Purple Law, that was much bigger. Because, and here's why I want to say that. I, I say all that to say that, like, yeah, this was this was a small nerf, sure. Like, the, and definitely against decks that like to go wide early on. Because this was best against, like, Blue Dofi, against Red Purple Law, against all the decks that were hyper-aggressive. It helped you deal with those cards. This card, though, is more the, like, the all-around boogeyman, right? You know, per perfect picture, perfect, like, character for all that, right? But... This is the card I was more concerned with or more concerned about. And I was really trying to see like, okay, I could have seen them restricting this down to a one of, and then Lucci's still working. Like, I mean, as a one of, even as a two of, I know Bandai never does two for some reason, whatever. I could have imagined them n knocking this card down to a one or a two of, and Lucci's still working out just fine. But with, but what a lot of people would say is, okay, but if they banned this card or if they restricted it or whatever... You're hurting Black Yellow Luchi, or uh, excuse me, Black Yellow Luffy. That'd be cool in the future, Black Yellow Luchi. That'd be cool. But no, Black Yellow Luffy. You're you're hurting Gecko Moria. You're hurting Perona. And that's where see now that's where for me personally, I think what should have been done was like okay, Irada, this can only be played in Thriller Bark Pirates Leaders and and uh, Seven Worlds of the Sea. Lock it and we're done. Right, lock it. We're done. Moving on, because yes, that would have hurt Luchi in a way that I think really slows him down. And, and Black and Yellow Luffy, they would have just had to uh, adjust. And guys, there are ways to adjust with Black, Yellow, Luffy. Let me bring up one real quick. Okay, this is just like a standard Black, Yellow, Luffy list, right? You just have to drop these these Gecko Morias, and you're going to have to put something else there. It's just that simple. Like, y you just have to move on, though, is what I'm trying to say, right? Like, it, it, I, I know the deck would lose power, but you would have to explore other areas where, like, maybe you're not sitting at 9,000 power all the time. Maybe you're more focused on going, like, five-cost characters. And then you and then uh, using cards like Viola to just gain to gain two life instead of actually like losing it on the next turn. I I still think Black Yellow Luffy would have been fine. I know a lot of people are probably rolling their eyes right now. 
Guys, I have played Black Yellow Luffy more than most. I, I haven't played it more than anyone, but I have played Black Yellow Luffy more than most, and I don't just stick to these cookie-cutter builds that I found online. I make my own builds a lot of times. Like, there's one... I'll show you guys. I mean, like, like okay, I've got like 150 decks over here, but I called this one Frankenstein because this one right here was supposed to be if Gekko Mori went down to a one of, then I was going to go up two of Rebecca and go up two of Nami in this list. But if he had, if, or excuse me, it would have been up to two Rebecca and down to, and down and up, up one Nami. Because I thought, I honestly thought, guys, like in my mind, like, okay, they're going to restrict Gekko Moria down to a one of. I just thought it was going to be for the balance of the game, for the future of the game, for the good of the game. But he totally missed it, and he did not get banned, and nothing happened. It is what it is. Hey, I've got my play set of Gekko Moria's. I'm fine. I'll just keep playing him. You know what I mean? But I still just, I still think that this card is just so overwhelmingly powerful. And people think that, like, oh, Black Yellow Luffy needed this card. I don't think so, because Viola allows this this Luffy card. Attach two to Luffy, pay two for Viola. That was a four dawn investment. I could uh, gain two life and flip them over where I actually gain the card advantage. And then from there, I could play out my other five cost guys, you know, things like who's who. I could have Satori triggers in there. I could have who's who triggers in there. I could have the five cost rocket boots Luffy trigger in there. You name it. Uh, and, and I didn't even include uh, one that I was going to include later was this new uh, Nami card. The five cost Nami. This is another one that I was going to include in this deck in the future. If if they had, you know, banned or restricted or whatever Gekko Moria, I was going to be able to make easy adjustments from here. Okay. By the way, yes, I know this only this only affects um, black Straw Hat Crew characters. I know it's annoying. I, I don't want to go on that rant today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, where was I going with all that? I, I whatever the case is, all, all I'm trying to say is this: Gekko Moria I see as a bigger threat. To the to the format than any lobby because Gecko Moria the actual leader. Let me see. Let me bring up Gecko Moria real quick. Uh, do do do. I think I have. Uh, let me just do Gecko Seven. Gecko Eight is like something I was messing with. Like this deck is still what it is, right? Like you could run this in OP07. You can run this in OP08. Make slight adjustments where you need to, like add add Jack in OP08, and then we're off to the races, right? And I think I think Jack literally becomes this card. Like yes. Or actually, uh, Kuzan. I was going to say, yes, you could replace Brook with it and lose uh, two 1k counters, but whatever. You know, just drop down uh, Jack in the list and may maybe even keep Kuzan. I, I don't know. I'm not going to go over that in today's video. I just don't think it would have been a big deal to lose. Um, you know, I, I don't... How do I say this? I think Gekko Moore is going to be fine going forward, and I wish they had just leader locked this card right here, because this is the card that I think pushes certain black decks just, like, over the limit. Because the same thing is true of what we just looked at with, uh, with Black Yellow Luffy. Like, let me just go to a standard black, yellow, Luffy list. Like, this is a full yellow deck, right? This one's running two Kuzans, and of course, it's got the four blocker Sabos, but everything else is yellow except this one card. And this this one card, like, puts this deck into a whole different realm, right? Oh, well, okay, I'm rambling too much about it. Now let's talk about decks moving forward. Um, let me go back to the slideshow real quick. So, I don't know. Actually, I should keep this up, shouldn't I? So that way I can go through all the different leaders and stuff. That, that's why I had those uh, leaders up earlier. Hang on one second, guys. So let me just bring up, let me clear the deck list and, and go to leaders. Now let's, let's we're going to do a quick overview of the leaders I think are going to be fine and moving on and, and whatnot. Um, how things are going to change. This is a quick tier list. I will change, I will do a, uh, or not change this, I will do a full tier list later. Okay, I'll do a full tier list later. But just like as a quick sneak peek. Zoro, I think, will probably become just like the Rush deck now because Red Purple Ball, it was like a control Rush deck. It was like a Rush control deck or something like that. So maybe maybe Zoro will start seeing more play. One card that I know, or one leader that I know will see more play is Reiju. Reiju will be very strong now. Um, I think this will do just fine. But Luchi, because it will be losing the stage, will have more Ice Ages. And now it will have a, a better chance at dealing with, um, with Reiju, right? With the seven cost guy. Um, what else? Rebecca's been kind of making waves lately. A lot of people have been talking about Rebecca, at least like in like local areas and local, you know, the, the smaller sources have been, re you know, reporting like, hey, Rebecca's on the rise. Rebecca's on the rise. Uh, I think Bonnie's still going to be fine. I think this leader's going to be A-OK. -okay. I think they're, gonna, they're not going to change too much. They're just going to be a solid A-plus, like low S-tier, high A-tier contender. Um, let me keep going here. Now, Trafalgar Law, that's interesting. Trafalgar Law is interesting, the red-green one, because if if Innie's Lobby is gone, it will be harder to remove wide boards. We don't have to worry about red-purple Law anymore because that it's it's banned, right? That, that leader is just totally gone. Even, even the promo version, guys, it's out of here, okay? Red-green Law can now fill the board up better than pretty much anyone, right? 
it probably always could fill the board better better than anyone but with such low cost characters it's very easy for you know just one luchi like a four cost character luchi to just pop their entire board but uh this could be interesting because they still have the luchi of course and they can do minus one with their with their uh leader maybe it's it's probably still not too like this leader is probably still going to struggle into luchi but you know i don't know a step in the right direction where maybe in the future this leader will be playable again uh, like like I, I i say playable again it literally won the first op07 tournament but y'all know what i'm trying to say uh white beard i'm not going to do every single leader guys i'm just going to kind of skip over the ones that are more competitive newgate i do think this one will probably stay around the same might get a little bit better because red purple law i don't know red purple law kind of struggled in, struggled into 6k leaders so i don't know i think it will just i think okay let me say this every deck will just by def, by default get better okay <laughs> Every leader will by default get better now that Red Purple Law is on the format because it was it was starting to run things going into OP08. OP07, we weren't even seeing those problems yet. You know what I mean? But it was once it got Black Maria in the new pudding card, that's where things got out of control. But let me just focus on a few of these that I really wanted to mention. Number one is Dofi. Actually, excuse me. Number one was Reju. Where is Reju? Number one is Reju. I think this leader now, it was being gate kept very hard by Red Purple Law. Yes, good Reju players could still beat Red Purple Law. I don't want to hear it, guys. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about when everyone is on equal footing, equal skill levels. Red Purple Law, the way the deck was, it was just like geared to beat Reju. It, it is what it is, right? But now, Red Purple Law is about to be pretty much non-existent. So this card, or this leader, excuse me, this leader and this deck will be very, very strong. Doflamingo, I still think, will be... It was already on the rise, and now Lucci lost some of its more consistent way of popping, like, you know, four or less targets with the Innie's Lobby. This leader will probably go on the rise as well. Same thing with Uda. Now that they have less overall... So, so let me say this. The decks that go wide, they all got a buff. They got a massive buff because, number one, Red Purple Law did that the best, and now they're pretty much gone, so any deck can fill that go-wide slot. And number two, the deck that was keeping those in check was Lucci with any's lobby and now they're going to go wide and just not be punished at least not as severely as before but that will probably force cards like uh the the eight cost secret uh sabo the black eight cost sabo it will probably need to show up more in in a, in a black decks that or isho the eight cost isho because then it's like okay minus three to everything on the board and now my luchi's popping a four and a five you know what i mean or even like a four and a six or a five and a five with the leader added on so really cool stuff there uh, what else? Okay, this leader, actually, now now that Innie's Lobby is gone, this leader might actually be a little bit a little bit more decent because it does the same thing as Dofi does where it fills out the board to the best of its ability because it's running a seven Warlords package. But now we're swinging like crazy, right? We're just beating people down. Th this could be interesting. I will be keeping my, my eye on this leader because this is one of my favorites. For those who have been following the channel for long enough, you know I was a big, big fan of this uh, of this leader. Of course, my red, yellow Sabo deck is just going to keep on trucking. I will say this. Lucci was a tough matchup if you didn't see a rusher, um, but it was still very winnable. And red, purple, law, I don't know. It must have been like 60% uh, chance to win for Sabo and 40% for the red, purple, law. We lost one of our best matchups. I'm not going to lie. Like one of our, well, not our best matchup. It's definitely not our best. Uh, red, purple, Luffy is this deck's best matchup. It is what it is. I, I can't understand how it works that way. But hey, having having triggers in my deck that go off my my opponent's leader having three or less life, yep, I'll get those free bodies every single time. Like I said, this leader's like built to beat Red Purple Law. However, Red Purple, or excuse me, beat to beat built to beat Red Purple Luffy. But Red Purple Law, I I really liked my my matchup into Red Purple Law as well. Yes, Red Purple Law could win. Maybe it was closer to like a 55-45, but I I felt like Sabo was pretty well favored in that matchup. Uh, okay, what else? Anel. Let's talk about Anel. Uh, I think a lot of people are surprised that Anel was not hit at all. I am as well. I, I am surprised as well. I'm not going to lie. Because one thing you have to consider is like, okay, when bans and restrictions are happening, if I'm a designer, I'm trying to think of what is good for the long term of this game. In other words, if, if, if we get a new player, it's, it's a new a new kid. He, let's, let's just say they're like kind of young, even like 18 years old, 17, 18 years old. They're trying to get into one piece and they play against Anel. And they literally can't win, right? Like, like, it's not even a matter of skill. They just probably can't win because this guy's going to keep gaining life every turn and drop these massive, massive characters. And that's fine. I'm not saying that a new player should beat an experienced player. Please do not take the wrong idea out of this. But it would have been nice if they in some way hit an L. I'm not saying I know how they should have done that. Like, I don't know if they needed to nerf the leader effect. I don't know if they needed to restrict Katakuri. 
or something along those lines. I don't know. Excuse me. It becomes harder and harder to balance a game as more and more cards enter, in, enter into the card pool. And that's where rotations are very nice, but I'm not even going to get into that in today's video. Uh, one thing I do want to say, I, I got to give a shout out to uh, the Small Hat crew over at uh, Small Hat Chris and those guys over there at the Small Hat crew. They recently had a tournament where basically it was a leader lock tournament. So in other words, like Enel here, notice Enel is a Sky Island leader. That's that's his only type. Well, if you were to build a Sky Island, or excuse me, if you were to build a Enel deck, you could only use Sky Island cards. I love that idea. And I think that might be healthy for the future of this game if they if they start implementing that, like maybe in the future, like maybe say we're like 10 sets in where there's just so many options across all color pools then it's just easy to, you know, still build a deck while doing that. I think that would balance a lot of things just right off the bat. Then you don't have to leader lock a card like Gecko Moria. Then you don't have to lead, leader lock a card like, you know, Black Maria in OP08. It would just fix everything. Same thing with Tinlin. You don't have to leader lock it because your leader would just have to be Lin Lin in order to run the card. And I know a lot of people think like, well, that'd be really restricting. Yes, but is that the worst thing? Because I feel like that's a lot easier to balance for the designers and, and all that stuff moving forward. Anyway, let me not let me not get too far, you know, away from from what we're talking about. Um, other leaders I do want to talk about. I think Smoker's about to get pretty decent here, coming out in OP zero eight point five. Now he he might become the best um, black leader, right? Because Lucci might take a step back. Well, Smoker's going to have access to a stage. He will have access to Marine Ford. Right, because Marine Ford, your leader does have to be Navy in order to get the minus one every every turn. So really good stuff there. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe people. I, I don't know. I, I was gonna say if I'm gonna run any version of Lucci, it will be the new OP08 or the new OP07 version of Lucci. I think Gecko Moria is gonna be absolutely solid. I don't think this leader is going anywhere. I think this is still like a high A tier leader. Uh, Pudding and and King going into OP08 might have a chance now. Now that uh, the you know the the consistency is going to be hit a little bit from Lucci losing the stage. Who knows? Pudding and King might have a chance now. Pudding will definitely have a chance because Pudding was really being held up by Red Purple Law, just like running them over before they could even play their bodies. Right? They just go super wide on the board, drop a ten, you know, drop ten Lin. I dare you, and they just swing like ten, you know, six attacks deep. Uh, so, so now that now that Red Purple Law is gone, uh, Purple Yellow Pudding might be okay. Uh, Purple Straw Hat crew of anything will be very strong soon. I, I have a feeling, guys. I, I am looking forward to that. Uh, what else? Yeah, this this is the new yeah this is the new promo Sakazuki. Man, the red purple law is on par with this one. You know what I mean? Pause this and read this if you don't know what this card does. They're uh they're cut from the same cloth. We'll say they're cut from the same cloth. Uh, Boa might be pretty decent now, but I still think Do, uh, Do Flamingo just takes the cake. I think it's just a slightly better version of Boa. Um. Blue Yellow Queen. I, I haven't thought about Blue Yellow Queen. I'm not going to say anything about this. I think Rebecca might be decent. Um, jo Jory Bonnie's still going to be good going into OP08, even with Carrot. I just... Well, I don't know. I, okay, I think Red Purple Law was just too fast for Carrot. But, and, and at the same time, um, Lucci had too much removal for Carrot. So now with those both being... Like Red Purple Law being gone, and then Lucci being you know knocked down a notch, maybe Carrot's decent? I don't know. Yamato, I don't know. This one's always iffy for me. Because I feel like, I, I don't know, it, it almost feels gimmicky to me unless you want to build it as a fortress version. So we'll have to see. Corona, probably very solid now. This might actually be one of the best black decks in the game, even though it's a black and green deck. Um, Hody Jones, that could be interesting. I know this got top 64 recently over here in the West, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. Esho, not so much. Sorry to all the Esho fans out there, all the Esho lovers. I, I know, I, I like the leader too, but I don't think so yet. Now, in PRB01, OP08.5, PRB01, around the time that all of the new uh, starter decks release, I do think this probably probably becomes the premier new red rush leader. Now, in OP09, look at this, guys. They, they got this updated on the sim already. I, I'm not ready to put reps in with this leader just yet, but I can't wait to start messing with this leader. This will be my go-to red leader. Like, red is not my favorite color. Okay, it's not my favorite color in the game. But what this leader is doing, I'm a huge fan of. Because this is like a control version of red that I really want to see what happens. And uh, I thought this leader was going to be good. Same thing with Blackbeard, by the way. I think Shanks and Blackbeard are going to be good, just period. So even so now they're probably going to be even better that Red Purple Law is gone. And uh, Luchi got a slight nerf. So that should be interesting. Marco... I want this card. I want this leader to be so good, but it is still struggling even after the OP08.5 um, upgrades that I got. We'll have to see what happens there.
And that's about it, guys. If I missed a leader, please, first of all, please do not get mad at me. A red, purple, Luffy, I think this leader gets even better because one of their biggest uh, struggles was red, purple, law. Okay, going so wide, swinging a bunch of sixes, it just takes them down. You know, it takes down the giant so easily. Uh, but I think red, purple, Luffy, probably going to be pretty decent. However, like I was saying, now that Luchi is, is going to be off of the, uh, what do they call the Innies lobbies? They're just going to go up the Ice Ages now because they have to run Ice Age. And that will inherently make them stronger against Red Purple Luffy, right? Because where they would have had to invest like two or three actions just to remove like one, eight, nine, or ten cost character. Think of it like this. Now if you have to remove a, um, let's just say, I don't, I'm trying to think of like a good, a good example. Let's just say you have to remove like a seven cost kid. Or, or actually, let's do nine cost white beard. Nine cost will be, a, that's, that's a good attack, right? That's a good hit. Okay, well you swing for five with your leader. Now, yes, it won't go through, right, because they just played um, white, white Beard, but it doesn't matter because you're just going to remove it. You just you swing for five with your leader, minus one to White Beard, minus five with Ice Age, and you hit him with a Kaku. You know what I mean? I think that's going to be the way to, the way to go for Lucci going forward. But yeah, other than that, guys, if I missed a really, like, good upcoming hero bear with me like i tried to add a lot of them like i think uda's gonna be good reju i think dopey is on the up and up now big time oh nami i didn't mention nami this should be interesting now the red purple law is gone there will have to be like a new very aggressive ad aggro deck that can deal with nami number one i do think it is doflamingo i think they can just swing wide enough every single turn enough to go for a uh, nami and the same thing with any kind of rush deck like zoro whitebeard or even sanji when that comes out i think they'll be able to compete against nami but Still a very strong leader going forward, and now Red Purple's gone. It will have one less bad matchup. You know what I mean? Uh, what else? Ace, I'm always I'm always uh, waiting and watching for this for this leader to pop off. Uh, Raise you, like I said. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everyone, guys. I think that's pretty much everyone. Vegapunk, Vegapunk might go up in OP08 once it gets a few new cards. Uh, th this leader might go up in um in pr in you know in the meta now that ve now that uh, Red Purple Law is not going to be there anymore. Enel and Katakuri. I think Enel and Katakuri will both be absolutely fine going forward. And then uh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention, Black, Yellow, Luffy. Like I said, Gecko Moria didn't get hit, so Black, Yellow, Luffy's feeling just fine. Because now, now, okay, here's my question. What deck has bottom decking now to get rid of um, the Sabos and stuff for Black, Yellow, Luffy? And I know a lot of people are going to be thinking like, well, Dofi's going to have unblockable. We, I think, you know, spoiler warning, but we saw that in last night's, um, in last night's tournament in the East. But honestly, uh, Black Yellow Luffy probably does go up a notch back to kind of where it was before people started figuring the deck out. I do think this leader is going to be doing very well. Maybe Foxy will be the new leader for the Purple Dawn reduction, where it's like, I'm just going to keep you know, losing Dawn every turn and just locking your board down. This might become a very strong Purple Control deck. I'm not saying it's incredible. I'm just saying there could be something there that could be very interesting. Purple Luffy, like I said, guys, I, I, we're not even going to talk about OP09 other than like what I said with Sh Shanks and Blackbeard. we got to wait for those cards to come out. But as far as the end of OP07 goes and going into OP08, hey, without Red Purple Law there and with a slight nerf to Luchi, I think the format's going to look pretty healthy, guys. Tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Um, don't worry. We'll be back to normal videos tomorrow. But this was something we had to cover in today's video. We had to talk about this. And let me go ahead and bring it up one more time. Actually, what, one more time what I want to bring up is, like like I just said, when it comes to Lucci going forward, y'all tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think Lucci's going to be okay? Because honestly, I do. I think, In fact, I think it's a very, very easy fix. Hang on one second, guys. Let me do uh, Ice Age. Whoops, I don't have it. There we go. I think Ice Age goes up to a three of to replace like the uh, the lobbies. And then I would drop Brook down and I'd go up some 2K counters. I mean, you can even go up the Suru for now. You know what I mean? Just go up to four, go up to 12 2K counters because now you're going to need cost reduction here, cost reduction here, cost reduction here. All of the 2K counters are cost reduction. You're still going to have your Tempest Kick. And then the Ice Ages. And, and by the way, I'm only missing the leader. That's why it says I have 50 out of 51. This is a full 50 card deck right here if you count the leader. Or 51 cards if you count the leader. So I think this will just be like a natural progression for the deck. The only thing I would like to see uh, go up is, is this card right here is Kaku. I, I mean, even... Okay, since we're down a Brook, maybe even go down one Rebecca just to go up the Kaku. Let me see something. Yeah, may, maybe something along these lines right here. And a card to consider going forward for anyone who is playing Lucian and just wants to know what to play. You can also include a card like this, and this will help you get there as well. 
Yes, you will have to move some cards around. Maybe you even go down a Luchi now because Luchi's not as powerful as it used to be. Maybe you go down a Luchi, and maybe you go down... Maybe you go down a Luchi and a Kaku, and then go up two of these uh, eight cost guys here. You got to be careful. You don't want to have too many eight cost guys like the show in the in the Gecko Morias. But hopefully, you guys see what I'm trying to say. I will have a video showing how to you know building a, a deck without the stage for Luchi later. Again, y'all and y'all tell me what y'all think. What did y'all wish would have gotten hit, like restricted or banned or whatever? Say it in the comment section below. Let's just please be respectful, guys. I want to know what you guys think. Were these bans and restrictions like what you? Is this what you were expecting? Um, or is this, do you think this is even going to help? I, I get the red purple law ban. That was fine. I get it. I'm not happy about any leader being banned, but I do understand their logic on that ban. The Emmy's lobby one to me though. Okay. I guess, yeah, I guess it's a small nerf. I'm not going to argue that it, it is definitely a small nerf to the consistency of the early game for Lucci, <laughs> but then it becomes ice age and it starts dealing with bigger and bigger targets. You know what I mean? Um, but again, it, it should still hurt the consistency. You guys tell me what y'all think. I really want to hear what y'all have to say. Um, do you, what card do you guys wish had gotten restricted or banned? Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, just to wrap up, the card I could not believe did not get restricted was Gecko Moria. I can't believe it, but hey, like I said, I've got my full play set. I'm, I'm not exactly, it's, you know, how do I say this? I'm not, well, it's like the dad thing, right? You know, I, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like one of those situations, but um. Oops, I got this kind of warning on my phone. Uh, sorry about that. It's just one of those situations where, again, it's like I'm not sad or I'm not mad or whatever. I'm just disappointed. Uh, but, hey, like I said, I've still got my play set anytime I want to play it. I will say this. It is getting very annoying playing against Gecko Moria, though. Like, as I'm not a new player, right? I'm a veteran player. And I can't wait to see what my opponent plays on 8 Dawn. On, you know, for any, any deck running any form of black. I can't wait to see what they play on 8, 9, and 10 Dawn. You know, it's just always going to be Gekka Moria because that is what, like, I feel like that's the glue right now that's really holding some of those decks together. But anyway, I want to know what you guys have to say. Sorry about the rant-style video. I know this, this video didn't have a lot of direction. I just wanted to get some things off my mind. And just know I'm not mad. I'm not whining. I'm not upset. Hey, I'm fine. I'm a red-yellow Sabo main, right? I'm having fun at the end of the day. I'm having a good time. But I want to know what the, what the community thinks. I, know, I want to know what y'all have to say. Please keep it civil. All right, that's it. Uh, real quick, big shout out to everybody who supports the channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already. Guys, you are helping me out so much just by liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, viewing the video. You're, you're helping me out big time. I really appreciate it. So a uh, big shout out to the, to the uh, VV Pirates Playmat supporters as well. I hope you're enjoying your mat. I still got about 40 of those left for those who are interested. And then uh, last but not least, of course, the VV Pirates patron page. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, donating and helping out in the ways you do. You guys are amazing. All right, I'm done. Uh, again, please do not forget to uh, like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. And that's it, guys. All right, till next time. Peace.